Hello everyone, welcome back to a new episode of Final Fantasy 16. Last time we left off, we were here at Martha's Rest, and I think we're gonna go ahead and talk to THE Martha. What an honor. Hello. Excuse me, would you happen to be the landlady? Depends who's asking, and why they have an Imperial Bearer with them. For protection, which hopefully won't be needed, if you can advise me on the safest route to the West. It's your friend here I'd be worried about. Bearers don't have an easy time of it in Rose area. Even a Stratton lad like him might attract the wrong kind of attention. And if he gets nabbed, it ain't likely to end well for you either. Then we'll just have to stay out of the malicious way. Gav said you might be able to help us. Follow me. <laughs> just got a name drop, Gav. Yeah. Sorry for before. Can't be too wary of strangers asking questions in our game. I'm Martha, an old friend of Sid's. He said he had high hopes for a bearer who joined recently. I expect that's you. So, where is it you're headed? For Phoenix Gate. We have questions that need answering. Is that so? Well, if you want to avoid the garrison, the road through Eastpool's your best bet. Or it would be, if the bridge hadn't collapsed. A right blooming nuisance it is. We've had no trade with the village for weeks. I did ask our carpenter to take a look at it. But he went out on another job. And he hasn't come back. Do you think something might have... happened to him? Fingers crossed he's just taking his time. The alternative don't bear thinking about. We'll find him. And make sure he's safe. We both need that bridge repaired. And your carpenter sounds like the man to do it. I see why Sid's got such a soft spot for you. If you could, I'd be in your debt. You said that he went out on a job? Right. He went down into the marshes to check on another bridge. The one by the Fallen Gate. The marshes were dangerous at the best of times. We should hurry. There's a ladder to the side of the gate. That's the quickest way down, if you've a head for heights. His name is Bernard. Should you find him well, tell him Martha sent you, and that he's wanted at the bridge to Eastpool. All right, building bridges, just just like the 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 Kojima game. To the marshes, then. Let's find that ladder. I don't know why I can't think of the name of it right now, but you, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I don't know why it's escaping me. The one, the one that has Norman Reedus as the main character and all of that. Is the gate, and that must be the ladder. And when's that gonna be? Uh huh. Yeah. All right. Well, there's the ladder. Oh, I just wanted to roll down and break Clive's legs. Oh. <clears throat> the game won't let me. So yeah, this is how I actually came into town. Oh. What was that? Well, this is easy. From under the bridge. Come on. Okay, wow, that was quick. Hello. There he is. How we doing? Hold on, we're coming. Mm-hmm. It's over. Okay, these things have quite a bit of HP actually. These are some tanky cray claws. They are truly cray. Alright. Go ahead and swap here. And dead. That was cool. Clive saying die and then it goes into slowdown time. I like it. Ooh, we have 586 uh, points. Ooh, and more valley matters. Cool. Thank you, my lady. 
You saved my life. You think somebody would have heard you screaming from town? You're Bernard the carpenter, yes? It's right there. I, I, I didn't realize my name was known so widely. I'm a friend of Martha's. She asked us to come and find you. Well, I'm very grateful for it. I just finished checking these piles when I turn around. I see a gang of slavering monsters looking to, to feast on my flesh. If you hadn't come when you did, I'd have been snipped into strips by now. We're just glad you're safe. Why? Well, I best go and give my regards to the landlady then, eh? Actually, she asked that if we found you, we should beg you make haste to repair the bridge to Eastpool. Of course. I, I said I'd take a look at it, but I it clean slipped my mind. I'll head up there straight away. All right. Thank you, friend. God, it must be incredibly spooky to let your kids go play in this world when, I don't know, giant crabs can come and eat them. Kids must have to play in town. Oh, the trusses are still sturdy. It's just a matter of replacing the stringers and relining the deck. I'll have it done in no time. Thank you, Bernard. We were hoping to take the road to Eastpool ourselves. We're very grateful for your help. And sorry for asking this of you after what you've been through. I owe you my life. Fixing a bridge is the least I can do. Thank you, my lady. And you too, son. You're with Sid, ain't ya? Me and him will go way back. Not as far as Martha mine, but far enough. I see. I thought you were being strangely nice to me. Well, I best get cracking then. You go and let Martha know I'm alright. And she'll have her bridge back soon enough. We will. Yeah, because you were you were being pretty friendly to me, unlike some of the other characters that we've seen here. So I was like, huh. Alright, and that's where we're going, yeah. Okay, so fulfill Martha's request and report back to Martha. The bridge will be fixed when it's fixed, alright? Yeah. Well, we supposed to be in East Pool yesterday. Does this man even know what he's doing? Yes, yes, he knows what he's doing. Maybe you should maybe you should become an icon and sprout wings and fly over there, huh? Maybe that's what you should do. Pray to Garuda for help. Oh, there's the courtesan. You ain't pulled that sword from his I know. Oh god, we walked through the, the red light district. The horny district. Let's just let's just go ahead and get out of there. Alright, let's go. Hello. On dressing greens of Geisal. Or Gisol, that was right. Yeah, they call it Gisol. Never down raw, lest bitter juices inspire violent retching and loose bowels. Avoid the fry pan, lest foul stink taint the iron, rendering none better than slag. And by no means put the stew. Let the vapors overexcite stabled boss. Suffer the fodder one must, first mix with nine parts drake's mint, six parts lemon peel, or three parts ginger root, and soak in honeyed wine for a quarter moon to lessen malador. Interesting, you can cook Gisol greens. Martha Brooks no sharps. The following cheatery will be repaid with a swift boot to the arse. Mucking, stacking, packing, peaking, palming, foisting, fingering. I'm imagining that's different than I than I think. I do not know what many of those words mean. Hello. It's talking about cheating, so I imagine it's like at cards and stuff. What happened? Did you find Bernard? We did. He's fine. And he'll have the bridge to Eastpool repaired soon. Oh, well, thank the Founder for that. It was lucky we found him when we did. The creatures out there are not to be trifled with. It's the Blight's fault. They'd nothing to eat in the North, so they come down here hunting for food. He can't keep going out alone. I'll have to arrange a guard for him. But anyway, thank you. I don't have a lot to offer in return. But you're welcome to rest here until the repairs are finished. We'd be delighted. That'll be just dandy. Big, more big XP? Yes! A hundred. Just like that. And money. And a meteorite. Can I get you a drink or anything while you wait? Flagon of Imperial Gold, perhaps? Tastes like swill, but it'll slake a thirst. No, thank you. I prefer the truth. About why there are so few bearers around here. Yes. 
There were more of them when we were young. Far more. Is this the Empire's doing? Have they been sent away? They have, aye. Either to the Legions or Auriflam. Seems the miners at Drake's Head are having a hard time keeping up with demand of late. So the bearers make up the shortfall. Time was they used to dole out crystals like sugar plums even down here in the provinces, but not anymore. Nowadays, they'll jump at any excuse to confiscate our bearers so they can be put to work elsewhere. I always knew the Empire treated their branded like shit, but after seeing it with my own eyes, well... Congratulations on the new arrival. And you got the little laddie with you? It was a bearer. The boy I carried for nine long moons. A bloody bearer. Oh, you poor thing. You gave it to the constables then. Just left it at the garrison, I Let them deal with it. Couldn't wait to be rid of the blasted thing. Been wanting it gone since the moment I found out. Uh. It's all dealt with now. So no harm done, eh? Mum, you weren't my brother, was he? No. But you'll have one soon enough. You just have to be patient. All right? All right. Unbelievable, isn't it? Bearers may have been looked down on back in Archduke Elwyn's day, but they were still human beings. Now, they've fallen so far, a beggar wouldn't spit on them. Since you're not drinking, do me a favour and take that to the Abbey. There's a darkness at the heart of this world, and I'd have you see it. Uh-oh. And we'll see it at an abbey. Glademond Abbey, on the shore of Sorrowise Bay. The abbot there is a friend. Tell him Martha sent you, and he'll show you what I mean. Understood. Okay, maybe not. <laughs> I was thinking for a second that, uh... That we were going to, um... Find out that the church is actually villainizing bearers. Um, but no, like maybe the Imperials were using that as a means to make the, the general populace hate bears because, I mean, that's something that's been done across history. Yeah, falling cheatery. Interesting. Yeah, we just talked about general rules for the place. Um, alright, well, let's go ahead and get out of here. But yeah, I was, I was assuming that's where that was going, that they, that the Imperials were using the church to kind of like spread like propaganda about um, <clears throat> bears and just kind of villainize them and build hatred around them. Much like how religion has done that with, like, women across history. Alright, so... Um... Abilities. What do we want? So I could upgrade Rook's Gambit, but... Frankly, I'm not really using it as much... anymore. I might go back to Gouge, honestly. Half the time I miss Rook's Gambit anyway. And this... Increases follow-up strike speed. I'm gonna do that, and we're gonna we're gonna go back to gouge. I think, because I uh, I do I do really like that. I gave Rook's Gambit a fair shake, and it's fine. But um, gouge I feel like is more more useful generally. Um, alrighty. Well, uh, and I already spoke to you, so. Uh-huh. So, let's take this down, right? This is where I'm going? Yeah. Because we can't go that way yet. So we gotta go this way. Alright, well, let's go see what's happening at Glidemon. ...that a bearer's fate has decided at birth. ...and assumed it was best for all concerned. I know. But for a child to be blamed... ...to be hated by its parents through no fault of its own... 
We knew nothing of what it meant to be born that way. Did we? No. Yeah, things are getting a lot worse for bears. I'm sure I'm sure the empire and possibly the church if that's what we find out is kind of, you know, just making the general populace kind of fearful of them as a way to kind of villainize them. Like all Oh, that's just the name. That's just like a short name for chocobos. Chocobos. They just call them bows because yeah, that's what that's what was listed on the thing. Bows. That's a shorthand. That's a cute shorthand name for them. Um. But yeah. Fortunately, it seems like they're uh, they're being super super villainized. I mean, magic or accusing people of knowing magic has been used across history a lot to to villainize. Various people. Um, a Megala crab. I mean, it is a pretty big crab. Um, but, uh, yeah, like, for example, um, I've had various studies done on, like, um, the Italian Renaissance, and something that happened in the Italian Renaissance were, uh, people, like, legitimately, be legitimately believed that women knew magic, just like all women, and they were all seductresses that could use magic to, like, get into the minds of men and stuff, and they were villainized for that reason. Um, and just very various things like that, just a bunch of crazy, crazy stuff that, uh, that people believed. And the church, like, leaned into it a little bit and stuff, so... It's just wild to, uh, to actually learn about and everything. So... Alrighty, let's, uh, keep exploring this way. Oh, this area is big. Okay. Is that an Adamantoys? Adamantoys? It is an Adamantoys! Hey! Hey, friends! Oh, look at you go. Uh huh. Pull you down. Mm hmm. Let's destroy that stagger meter. That's the other thing I like about Gouge, is it does that. And that's just amazing. Uh huh. Uh huh. Deadly embrace. And then just, uh, gouge you again. God, yeah, look at that stagger damage. Boom. Dang. I can't see shit, Jill. God, yeah, Garuda seems way better for inflicting stagger, whoops, than, uh, than, uh, the other one does. Phoenix. Okay, I didn't actually do the takedown that time! <laughs> I got messed up for it, too. Uh-huh. There we go. Whew. Yeah, Phoenix is just more about doing big, big DiMaggio. Um... Let's see, actually. What, uh, other abilities do I have for- Oh, yeah, it's the Reflect Projectiles one. Heat Wave. It's... eh. It seems like the third one is always kind of niche. Much like how, um... Uh... Rook's Gambit is pretty niche. And that one's pretty niche. You know, it's, it's like a counter-based thing rather than just a do-damage thing. Thank you. There we go. Don't let them get away. Boom. There we go. Big punish. Get him, puppy. Or, or Jill will get them. 
That's fine too. We do indeed live to fight another day. Alright. So... It's everything here, yeah? I guess I could walk back here. I can't help playing this and feeling like, oh man, this would, um... This would totally be, if they remade Final Fantasy X at this day and age, this is what it would look like and probably play like. Because Final Fantasy X was kind of like one of the last, or the last true, like, turn-based, uh, one that they made. So, because, uh, Final Fantasy XII isn't really, I guess Final Fantasy XIII was turn-based, but it had a little bit, it had, it had some wrinkles in it that kind of changed it up a little bit. Or was, or was Final Fantasy XIII real-time? I don't know. I didn't play Final Fantasy XIII that much, to be fair. I played a little bit of it, but that's kind of it. Six Briar Clam shells? Get out of the way of that. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Good stuff. Uh, pull you down. Alright. Now gouge you. There we go. Good. There we are. Ow. Thought I dodged that. Uh huh. Pull you down, and gouge. Yeah, this is just way, way better than Rook's Gambit. At least against, like, these kind of enemies. Um, maybe not against, maybe against, like, boss fights, Rook's Gambit would be better. But here, no. There we go. Gouge is also really, really good for getting that hit count up when they're staggered, so you can just increase your damage even more. It seems. Because if you do a gouge, like if you sta if you gouge and then it staggers them, you get a few gouge hits at the beginning of a stagger and the amount of hits seems to be what increases your damage multiplicatively. Because I was at 1.40 times damage at one point when I um, broke them with the gouge and it continued. Hey, Chocobos. Hello. Hello. That's a crazy color looking chocobo. Uh huh. And. When do I get my chocobo back? I want my chocobo back. Mm hmm. And. Boom! That one's probably gonna die to this. There we go. I was just trying to finish that one off with those really quick. Bunch of sharp fangs. Alright, so now we're over here. We got that place to go to. We also have this place. Just more mud crabs. That's all I can think of. Mud crabs from Elder Scrolls. There we go. I'm trying to... Okay, I failed miserably. Um, hi. I got off the, uh, off the beat on my, uh, magic punishes. Magic burst. There we go. Thank you for cleaning it up, Jill. Keep expecting X to be open. Goblin coin. Alright, are we good? That appears to be everything over here. Alright. 
So is this my introduction to Chocobo, uh, Chocobo, uh, whatchamacallit? Cause that's a, that's a crazy color, Chocobo. Chocobo, Chocobo breeding, Chocobo catching. Can I, can I hear the song, please? Please let me hear the song. Every single Final Fantasy game has like a different version of the Chocobo song, which... It's, it's always like something to Chocobo. Um, and every single one has like a different version of the song, like it's electronic, or it's jazz, or it's... I think, I think in Final Fantasy VII Remake it was rap? Um, so... I want to see what the version of the song is in this, if it has one. Bluebird. Oh no, you're just a fake Chocobo? What is this? Oh wait, no, the Chocobo do want to fight me. Oh no, I don't want to fight the wild Chocobo. But it got aggressive. Oh no. Okay, the Chocobo do actually super want to murder me. Alright. Oh, that feels bad. I like Chocobo. But I mean, yeah, they would be aggressive. I mean, look at them. Look at them. Oh, Chocobo. Oh, that feels bad. I mean, you could battle Chocobo in like Final Fantasy VII, but... Oh, it seems like they only get aggressive if there's a bluebird. Or if you walk up on them like I just did. Never mind. Poor thing. There you go. Well, that feels bad. The bluebird got aggressive with me, but it seems like Chocobo don't actually get aggressive with you unless you, like, totally walk up on them. At least that's what it feels like. Uh... There we go, that's what I was looking for. Uh-huh. Alright. Uh... Ow. I missed. I totally missed. Big smash. That was a good opportunity to do that, so... Okay, it's down. There we go. That'll actually knock them down, too. Using Torgle's easier, though. Alright. Paltry amounts of gill. So, I can use this to get over here. Did I explore this way? I did not. I basically just went out and went straight the other way. So, we do have some to take out here. Ravage, please. Thank you. Uh huh. Uh huh. Ow. There we go. There we go. Thank you, Torgal. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alright, Briar Clam shells. And yeah, alright. So now we just now we just go back over here. And it looks like we have another bluebird. Oh, I hate that they make the chocobo fight me too. Cause yeah, see the bluebird shows up as aggressive. But the chocobo are just here. Like they don't they don't do they don't do anything. They just kinda join when the bluebird fights me. Oh. I need the XP, but or the ability points rather. But I don't want to fight Chocobo. Chocobo are so cute. Alright, hello. Very, very much dead. There we go. What if the bluebird drop unique things that I need? I should probably fight them even though it feels bad. Even though it feels bad. I wish I could just fight the bluebird. Yeah, but it's it's weird to me that the other Chocobo do not show up specifically as enemies until um 
that thing aggro's on me, or if I just get like absurdly close to the wild chocobo. Yeah, it seems like they just drop bloody hides, so I don't think I need to fight them really. They do give me a lot of ability points though, my god, 48? That's a pretty good amount. That's pretty penny. Hello. You think you can hide from me? That's not gonna work. Bonk. There's another big horn over there. There we go. Ability finish. Ow. Caught me off guard there. Bonk. Oh, hey, you lived. Didn't realize you were still alive, friend. Alright, so, yeah, now we got this over here. And this should be it. There's a few more enemies over there. Hey, Bighorn. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh, Deadly Embrace. And... There we go. Did manage to break it. Is okay stagger damage. I wonder if I can parry anything, even an attack like that. Alright, not dealing with that. Uh huh. There we go. Pull you down. And big slashies. Okay. I don't think I can stop it from doing that once it starts doing it. There we go. There we go. Big takedown. Sorry, big friend. Whew. Yeah, those are fun to fight. Oh, look at Jill's little little thing. You you do the you do the night thing where you put your you put your blade in front of your face and kind of tap your forehead on it. Cool. Hello. Give them all you've got. There we go. Let's go ahead and finish those off that way. I wonder if things are actually weak to specific elements here, because I would imagine the Death Blossoms to be weak to fire, but I'm not sure if, like, elemental weaknesses actually play a part in here or anything. Come down here. There we go. There we are. Thank you, Torgal. That's enough. That attack is so weird. Just stab it in and then just kind of screw your sword around on top of them. Alright. So, that bridge is up. Alright. Um, I think we explored pretty much everything around here, though. So we should be good now. Um, to just go over here, I think. And, uh, I probably do need to go ahead and end this video off pretty soon here, so... Uh, let's just run over here to get back to where I need to be, and then, uh, I can pop a save, and we can maybe spend our AP. Uh, any other enemies over here to find? There's a little bit more over here, item-wise. Ah, there's more... Oh, these are arachnes. Hello. Excellent. How are we all doing? God, they, uh, they got messed up pretty badly. 
Oh my god. Those poor things. I just ran right in the middle of them and just did a big AoE fire attack, though, so... Makes sense. Alright, we good? I think we're basically good. Alright, so yeah, before I walk over to the next... Uh, oh, hi. Hello. And... Big smacks. And... Oh, I thought that was gonna... Oh my god, Jill, you do big damage. Wow. Okay. You do, like, more damage than me per attack. Alright, well, we'll save the rest of that for next time. Let's go ahead and spend our uh, AP here. Still never use Stomp. Or Down Thrust. Charged Magic. I am using this a fair bit. You should buff that a little. But if I save up to a thousand, I can... <laughs> if I save up to a thousand, I can upgrade Gouge even more. Maybe upgrading Wicked Wheel. Increased number of hits. Scarlet Cyclone, I would like to be upgraded as well. But we haven't upgraded this. This increases... Yeah, let's get, let's get that. Rising Flames, I'm using a fair bit, so... Alrighty, well, hope you enjoyed this episode, and I'll see you next time for some more.